floor plans and technical drawings are more than just lines, circles, and rectangles. Their purpose is to communicate verbally as well as visually. So our job as designers is to make sure that everybody involved on the project gets every last bit of information, even if it seems obvious. We must not leave anything for a contractor, an installer, a client, an architect, anybody to assume or guess what it is in our drawings. Can you imagine being at a job site where you're working on installing ceilings, for instance, and you have to place certain ceiling tiles in certain rooms, but the ceiling plan is not labeled and you don't know which rooms are what? You would have to flip back and forth between pages that have room names and pages that don't quite often, and that's annoying. And it also allows for people to make mistakes. And mistakes is how lawsuits happen in our field. So as designers, we have to protect ourselves, our business, our reputations, and our work by labeling everything. So every single floor plan that you create, be it a construction plan, a furniture plan, a ceiling plan, or a dimension plan, should show room names every single time. Now residential room names are really quite simple. We label each room with the name of that room. So for instance, the living room would be the living room, the bathroom would be the bathroom, the master bedroom would be the master bedroom, so on and so forth. Commercial building floor plans should include the name of the room along with a number. So the number helps you get more specific with the rooms. So for instance, let's say we're designing an office building and there's 30 offices. When we go to select finishes and furniture for these offices, they could have different carpets, they could have different furniture, or even different paint colors. So we can't say office is going to get this and this office is going to get that. We have to actually use numbers to help us specify what happens to that room more specifically. So obviously residential spaces don't have quite that many spaces and therefore numbers just aren't necessary. I mean you can do it, but it's not necessary. Now my example here is a residential example, so we're just going to label each room with the room names. Now, one of the biggest rules of construction document set creation is that the text sizes should appear to be the same size throughout the entire printed CD set. Now not all drawings are going to be scaled the same size in your set, so there is need to use different text sizes in your drawings. Therefore, you need to do a little bit of planning. So my tip to you is when you start drawing and putting together your CD sets, go ahead and draw all your objects in model space first. The walls, the doors, the windows, the furniture, everything. Then, before you start annotating the floor plan, uh, go to page setup and complete all of that first. Get your title block set up, get your floor plan scaled to the, uh, the scale that you're looking at doing. Then you come back to model space and using that information, you can put in your text. So I'm gonna, I have already set specific text sizes to match the scales of your drawings. In other words, whatever scale your viewport is set to, that is the size text that you should use. So let me demonstrate. On this sheet, I wanted the floor plan to be fairly large. So I set the scale to one quarter inch, which you can see here and down here, and then I locked it of course. So quarter inch scale. This gives me plenty of social distancing on my borders, and it also gives me a nice big area to eventually put a legend, which is something that we'll do later on down the road. So like I said, this template is designed for whatever scale your viewport is set to. That's the size text you should choose when selecting annotation size in model space. So let's go to model space. And I wanna put room names in here. So the first thing I need to do actually is set up the correct layer, right? So in this template, I have um, room name layers, and because our furniture is showing, this is a furniture plan. So I'm going to choose a room name fern, and you'll see it pops up. Text, I usually keep it nice and medium. I like the cyan because it's easy to see on the black. Next, I'm gonna go to the annotation tab and to the text panel, so right here. You should see a scroll bar at the very tippy top, and if I click on mine, you can see that I have a lot of textiles in here. You probably don't have hardly any. You probably just have standard and annotative. These textiles allow you to create set of text that you can use easily. It's kind of like a smart tool that controls font, style, and size of different texts. 
Now since our viewport was set to one quarter inch, the text I use for this particular drawing will be one quarter. Uh, so that's this one right here, one quarter. So I choose that option. And then I'm going to use single line. So if I click on this little arrow right here, it brings up the hidden panel, single line, multi-line. Since this is residential, pretty much all spaces should be single lined. So it says specify start point of text. And let's label this dining room over here. I'm going to click and then it says specify the rotation angle of text. So I just always bring my little extension line here over to the right. Um, and actually, I'm pretty sure that you can just hit enter and it's going to type your text uh, the standard way that we do in America from left to right. All right, so this since this is the dining room, I'm just going to type dining and it's all caps. Room name should be all caps. And I don't have to put room because obviously everything has a room or space. So I'm just putting dining. Hit escape to end that command. Otherwise, you'll kind of keep typing if you try to click off. All right, so here is my single line of text and I am placing it here in the dining. Now, another very good guideline to follow is to place a room name in the center of the room. However, you should not place it in or on an object, nor should any line pierce through the text. So try to center your room names without overlaying on any objects or line work. So obviously if I were to center this, it would be right here, but it's right on top of the table. And we try to shy away from doing that as much as possible. So that's why I put it down below here. It's also don't do things like this, where like I said, the line is piercing through the text. That makes it really hard to read when it prints black and white. So always try to keep text off of line work as centered as you possibly can. Give it a little breathing room around the objects, uh, but get it as close as you can. So I could even bring it down a little bit here because I think that's a little too close. I like space. I want people to actually see the room name. Okay, so there's that one. Now I could come back up here and do another text line if I wanted to. Just hit enter. This is kitchen. And escape. Oh, nope, you have to hit enter I think. Let's try it. It's been a while since I've done single text. So enter, kitchen, enter. Nope. Just click off I guess and then escape. Okay, that works. So there's kitchen. All right. Or I could take one of these and I could go to the home tab and I could use the copy command. So copy, click and drag it. Here's the living room. And then double click and then you can do it this way as well. Whatever is most comfortable to you, anything works. Copy. This is a one bedroom, so I can just name it bedroom. So I'm just going to copy it again. I'm a copy kind of girl. This is closet. You could call it a walk-in closet if you wanted to, but there's not a whole lot of space in this room. So I try to keep it um, as easy to do as possible. Now this is a storage closet, so I can write closet and as you can see this is really hard to get to fit into it. So you can either put the text out here. You can put it on top of a line in these instances. Try to choose it where there's a space in those dash lines. And you could call it closet or you could call it storage and the acronym that we use for storage is store. So you could either type storage or you can write store. Either one is fine, but again, I'm just trying to center it as best I can and still make the text readable. That is the number one rule. The text must be readable. Um, on this one, this is like a utilities closet. So I'm going to type util. And I put it right outside the door so that it's kind of obvious what I'm trying to label. Now I could I put it on top of that object? Yeah, I suppose that I could. That would go and work as well. So either way is fine, but that's the uh, water heater in the furnace. So it's like a little utilities closet. This is the bath. That's what we usually try to call when there is a shower or a tub in there. Otherwise it's a restroom when it's just the toilet and the sink. 
All right, so I think we got everything labeled except for, and I always save this one for last for some reason, but we do want to label hallways. Why? Because it's going to get some kind of material or finish in here and it helps us to organize our CD set when there's names of all the rooms that are going to get paint and flooring and all that stuff. So there it is. There is my floor plan with room names. All right, now if something happens that like your instructor or your boss says, you know, these just aren't large enough, it's super easy to change. You just grab it, go to the annotate tab, and let's do, so one quarter, let's try three sixteenths. So there you can see that you can make it larger by just changing the textile. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff um, like when you do a multi-line text and it's asking you like what the height is up here, don't worry about that stuff. That is already taken care of here in these textiles. So you never have to worry about having to input the text number if you have the textile already. So I'm going to put it back to one quarter and there we go. You're basically reassigning the textile very similar to how you've reassigned the layers. All right, so for those of you who do not have this template, I'm quickly going to show you how to create your own textiles. So on the text panel, you should see this little mini arrow. Click on that and the text style window will appear. Now my video tutorial series does not use annotative styles, so stay away from anything that has this little symbol. As you can see, I have a lot of text styles in this template and you probably just see standard and annotative again. So make sure that standard is highlighted. So I will do that and so that you can see and then click new. This little mini window will pop up asking you what you want to name it. So I already have one quarter, so I'm going to um, type one quarter as one big word, click OK, and then what happens is you see it show up in this little styles panel over here. Unfortunately, I always have a rough time trying to use numbers in this thing. It doesn't really like like fractions or anything like that, so I just type out the name of my textile. You do whatever you feel is you're comfortable with in terms of naming your textiles. But I always name it for whatever scale that the text should be used for. So now it's time to update the style. So choose the correct font and style. I like Arial. Some people like other things. Um, check out one of my videos about how to add uh, fonts into your computer system if you have a specific font that you want to use that AutoCAD does not have. You can also choose what font style you want. Is it bold? Is it italic? I always choose regular. And it's the height actually is one of the most important things uh, in this process. So when printed out on a piece of paper, the text should measure with a ruler a height of 1 8 inch. So because our drawings are scaled way, way down to fit on a piece of paper, we need to size text in weird ways in model space to compensate for the scaling that happens. Now this chart shows you what heights of text you should use at different scales to achieve that final printed height that you want. I'll do my best to post this chart as a comment in the video, but if it's not there, do a Google search and uh, look for AutoCAD text sizes and scaling. You should find this chart somewhere in there. So if we want our text to end up being uh, 1 8 inch in height when it prints, this column is the column that we need to use. So if our viewport is set to 1 quarter inch equals 1 foot, we must size our text to be 6 inches high in model space. That way when all is said and done, the text is going to measure 1 8 inch in height. So I'm going to put 6 inches here in this field and I am putting the quotations in this instance. When you have everything set, be sure to hit apply and that will save all of the changes that you made to this particular text style. And that is all there is to adding a textile. If you don't have my template, I suggest that you make textiles for all of these potential viewport scales and then match your textile to your viewports when you use them in model space. So again, I highly suggest that you draw all your objects first. 
then go to paper space and set up your layout. Get your drawing set into a viewport, get it into the title block, and then go back to model space and add all your text because it's only then that you'll know what your viewport scale is and then you can choose the correct text style the first time around. I'm certain that some of you might be a bit confused with all of this. We want text to print a certain size so we have to create text at a different size in model space so that it scales down and that it prints correctly in paper space. I think with more time and practice you're going to understand what we did in this video. Just trust my method. It works. Now this is not the only way to size text correctly. As I said earlier, many people use AutoCAD differently than I do. This is my method. So be open to learning from different people and use the method that works best for you. Alright, I'm on to the next video.